Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today for the encyclopedia, we are going to be restricting our gaze to one of the more specialized devil fruits in the series, the Ori Ori no Mi. The Ori Ori no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to bind whatever target they see fit in iron shackles using a variety of mechanisms provided by the fruit itself. It was eaten by the ever lovable marine Hina and was first shown off in all its glory during the tail end of the Alabaster arc. This fruit takes its name directly from the Japanese word for cage, but interestingly enough, the character in Chinese has a more expanded meaning, which can incorporate fence or railing. But once again in Japanese, it, it pretty clearly means cage. And so rather simply, the four kids stub had a rare moment of pragmatism and decided to translate it as the cage cage fruit in English, which Funimation would go on to keep when they inherited the dub, but this time around our non-conformist is the Viz Manga translation, who just had to be different and call it the bind bind fruit. Which is really odd when you think about it because in the early days of One Piece, Viz followed the decisions of four kids pretty closely. So this might be a case of Viz translating the fruit before four kids got around to dubbing it, anticipating the kind of weird onomatopoeia themes they were trying to go for. That or Viz took some initiative and thought, you know what, four kids, I've had enough of your weird translations. We're going to do this one my way. Only to be smacked down by Funimation going, no, nah, no nah, mate, Cage Cage was actually the right way to go this time. In any case, the Ori Ori no Mi is one of the more unique paramecias in the series. And initially it presents itself as extraordinarily powerful, boasting the ability to capture anyone or probably even anything the user desires simply by making physical contact. The key thing to remember though, is that it is specifically mentioned that the targets become caught in iron, a very problematic substance to escape from in the real world. But when considering the realm of One Piece, it automatically sets a hard limit on the power of the fruit. As if the user encounters anybody who can break, cut, or otherwise free themselves of such a substance, then the fruit power is effectively canceled out. Or is it? It's very, very much worth noting that one of the mechanisms of capture granted by the Ori Ori no Mi involves making contact with a target and then phasing part of the user's body through them, but leaving the target caught in an iron restraint. And this part is actually quite incredible because while the user of the Ori Ori no Mi may not be able to capture particularly strong opponents with the resulting iron constructs, they can quite potentially avoid incurring any form of damage by constantly phasing through their enemy. Now, whether even that may have limitations, the issue is we haven't really seen this fruit used a hell of a lot in the series. So a lot of this is pure speculation but it may very well be the case that the user is required to encompass their target before the phasing activates. In order to help this, the user seems to be capable of elongating and morphing their limbs into the vague shape of the resulting iron constructs. And any form of bodily manipulation is always a bonus when talking about weird paramecias. The Ori Ori no Mi can morph and extend the user's body quite an incredible length as well, resulting in their arms becoming a sort of fence-like structure, which automatically captures anybody who comes into contact with it. This is pretty great because it allows the user to fight with some semblance of range on their side, but once again, it comes with a cap caveat of the fact that iron is iron. If your target is unfazed by iron, then things are starting to look pretty grim for you. Unless of course you're also a master of armamentaki, in which case that should significantly bolster the restraints. But then of course that just evolves into a whose armamentaki is stronger battle. The more generalized use of the Ori Ori no Mi also comes with the downside of collateral damage, caused by potentially capturing allies, innocent bystanders, and just general stuff if you're not careful. The fruit also doesn't really present a whole lot of general utility. It has a very specific niche purpose, and as it could be applied to daily life, well, the obvious answer is police officer, guard, or some other authority figure. Other than that, I'm not exactly sure who has a need for this power. Mid, perhaps, maybe a zookeeper? Who has this power on standby just in case of like a lion escape? Or a mother trying to wrangle her children? Except that we do not use iron restraints on children. I want to make that clear. We do not use iron restraints on our children. Actually, you know what? One of the better possible uses would be giving the Ori Ori no Mi to some sort of BDSM specialist who can implement the restraints within their day-to-day -day activities. And with that in Mind, let's examine how Hina uses the Ori Ori no Mi. As a member of the Marine, she fits into the very standard sector of law enforcement and thus makes use of the fruit to capture lower tier pirates, preserving them for later justice. However, the Ori Ori no Mi is really only as effective as Hina herself. It's difficult to speak for post time skip Hina, but pre time skip, her physical abilities weren't anything particularly special. And so pirates like Luffy were just capable of zooming past her cagey cagey threats without any real sense of trouble. However, Hina's general use of the fruit is completely ideal and has greatly assisted her to the point where she has has reached the rank of Rear Admiral. As for any form of awakening, being able to change and manipulate one's environment is always a handy ability. And in the case of this fruit,
route would make capturing large groups even easier, although it does once again increase the risk of accidental captures. Because this is an odd Paramecia though, I'm hesitant to say that it would subscribe to the standard awakening we've seen. And even if it does, we still have the problems and limitations of iron. Personally, I think it would be a lot more interesting if the awakening had something to do with changing the substance that the target becomes shackled in, like turning it into something stronger or more maneuverable to wield, something like that. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a cage human. Be very, very aware that the Ori Ori no Mi, as with other Paramecia fruits, will likely have a limitation in some regard. This may be how many iron shackles the user can produce, how many people they can keep ensnared at once, or even how long the bindings last for. It's difficult to say exactly what that limit is, but there is almost certainly at least one of them. As for this next part, I'll say that this is a long shot, but due to the fact that you essentially become somewhat of an iron person, it may be entirely possible that you become immune to an iron deficiency, as an infinite supply may allow your body to make more hemoglobin and spread those delightful red blood cells around your fleshy vessel. Once again, that's a very long shot benefit, but hey, maybe? But to close things out, what we have here is a very, very niche fruit. Its powers are pretty incredible, but it has a narrow area of reasonable application. If you're not some kind of law enforcement, then the Ori Ori no Mi is unlikely to serve you too well at all. I mean, sure, it might be handy on very occasional situations, especially with the whole phasing potential, but I feel like you just receive more benefits in general from most other fruits in the series. And with that, we are going to commit the Ori Ori no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we are finally stepping out of the Alabastin era of Devil Fruits and launching into Jaya in order to examine the iconic Bane Bane no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Ori Ori no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.